Stephen, let's talk a little bit about some world events as well and what's going on all around the planet. Uh, you have some concerns about Venezuela. Tell me why. Well, I think Venezuela is a perfect example of a failed nation state. And I think we're seeing the food um, lines there that defy description. We're seeing what central planning does, especially when it fails miserably. Maduro's uh, government is uh, a basket case. Obviously, when you have, you have the great wealth of very wealthy people, then you have the average guy who has to uh, uh, search through dumpsters and doing everything they can to stay alive. And by the way, Venezuela had a thriving middle class. I've known some amazing Venezuelans. I've always known them to be incredibly productive, incredibly wonderful people. And yet now we're watching, and, and what's unique about this, George, is Venezuela had a thriving oil industry, and they had plenty of cash. Venezuela's been forced to uh, sell all their gold, and it says something when a nation basically cannot feed its own people. Now, fast forward into the United States. There's a, a website that monitors when different computer sites are down, Visa, MasterCard, whatever. But there's another one that's the EBT, the Electronic Benefit Transfer Card, that people use for food stamps. And they, it's literally gone off the charts. It isn't across the whole country, but it's selectively denying people a payment for up to now 10 days. I think we're up to 11 days. And if you take 11 days ago, the amount of people that weren't having their EBT cards, you know, replenished, refilled. So I see this. I see instead of unifying the country in the United States, I see a division coming that's so great. I see 102 million people unemployed, either uh, statistically and officially. And by the way, all the official statics, uh, excuse me, statistics that the U.S. government comes out with are fake. The best guy in the world is uh, John Williams with, I guess, it's shadow stats, the real statistics. We've got, what, close to 50 million people, 49-something million people on food stamps or the EBT cards. And what you have is is you'll have those stories, and then you'll have the stories of Manhattan apartments selling for, what, $100 million, $200 million? Uh, uh, ranches in Texas for selling for three quarters of a billion. Oh, jeez! It, it, it can it, it's it's the attitude of Marie Antoinette. Let them eat cake. No, in Venezuela, it's let them eat garbage. Unfortunately, the French Revolution and the attitude that led to the French Revolution is getting bigger and bigger. Uh, the president and Congress are out of touch with reality. Donald Trump is absolutely right. And isn't it interesting? You asked me about the trumpets. You know, twice in the book of Revelation, the trumpets are mentioned, okay? Well, more than twice, but two places in the uh, Bible, they're mentioned, the trump of God. And Trump is an interesting name, and it's fascinating <laughs> that it's not a obvious name like Smith, Jones. Uh, it, it, it's not a common name, but what's interesting to me is this is that people don't get the fact that there's a direct correlation with what Ross Perot used to talk about and warn about with a general agreement on trades and tariffs and now we've got the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership and it basically boiled down to this greed and contempt for the American worker. Uh, you might have saw the story last week and this is critical where 417,000 people on retirement uh, are facing the absolute shutoff of retirement. Yes. And what happens then, Steve, to these poor people? My well, God. What happens, they'll have to do whatever they need to do to stay alive. And and it's it's so much uh, on my heart, George. It breaks my heart. I, actually, I wrote a an email alert, and I guess you'd call it not an email, but a, a heads-up alert I'm saying to people, those of you with the ability to help your neighbor financially, you don't know that your neighbor just didn't get low, uh, let, excuse me, get, uh, he lost his job. You don't know that the person down the uh, street, you know, just lost everything. So, you know, again, I believe that America was great just like uh, the French wrote about us because our people are great. But what's happening is this crew in Washington, and by the way, I'm on record as saying they're brigands, pirates, and thieves, okay? And there are very few exceptions, if any, and people are tired of it. 
we have the same situation that Rome faced, Imperial Rome. We have enemies within the gates. We have enemies outside the gates. We've got a foreign policy and that's directly provoking Russia. And the idea is this, and let me make this clear for everybody, because this will put everything that's happening in the Middle East, everything that's happening with Russia, America's foreign policy, there are those who want World War III. You can call them crazy. I can call them insane. We can call them whatever we want, but they absolutely want it. Because in order to fulfill, and, and for the record, this is what you're seeing in the whole world if, of Islamic revolution, you're seeing the fulfillment that they believe, they believe, and it's written in their uh, books that there has to be the great war in, in, in order, actually the end of the world, to bring about their Imam Mahdi, the, the, their coming one. Second and, coming for him, yeah. Yep, and, and so what, what I, I'm, it breaks my heart to see. How about Chicago? How about how many people get shot there? And look, it's a gun-free zone, the same thing with Orlando. You know, I don't usually see an AR-15 rising up on two feet and indiscriminately going and blasting people, but instead of uniting the country against a common foe, a declared foe, look, if it smells like uh, ISIS, if they claim to be ISIS, if they want to make sure that everybody understands that, and then we have the cover-up and cover-over.